Welcome to another episode of This Is My Car. My name is David Jacobson. Today's guest is James Bezetta. James comes from a family of car enthusiasts, collectors, and dealers that span generations. Since being a young boy, James was exposed to the automotive world, attending vintage races and car shows with his family. Although he had a love for Porsche, it was the Japanese sports car that grabbed his attention. Most notably, the car that he brought for us today. Let's take a look. James. What's up, Dave? How are you, man? Doing all right. Happy Good. Good to see you. Good to see you also. Yeah. Welcome. Good to see you again. So, like I said, I, I don't want to be a broken record because every car that's on the show I love it's at some level. And um, I was this is one of the cars that again is 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 more of a, a younger younger time collectible, and it's really coming into its own now. And uh, who better to have represent that than you? But before we get into the car, tell me a little bit about for the people that are watching. How did you get to this point? Because I know you're from a long um, chain of, of car people in your family, but how did you, what, what's your bug? What did you, what, what excites you? Well, I mean, it, it's really trifle that came a little bit from motorsports, from, um, you know, collecting cars as well as, uh, as the car business. And, uh, my family kind of did all of that between my grandfather my uncle and my father. Um, you know, my, the, the, the seed was, uh, was, uh, <laughs> it was, it was planted, yeah, exactly. watered, fertilized and, and, and exactly. Just, you had, you had and had compounded those... throughout Absolutely. My entire life, so uh, yeah. you know, I've always loved cars, and I've always kind of um, really adored the ones that that we sell, also because those are the ones that you naturally spend right, time sure. around. Yeah. So um, about about 12 years ago now, we opened up our Subaru franchise, and um, I, I had to go try one out. So I, I got myself a WRX, and the car was fun 365 days a year in two feet of snow or on a July year, track day. What year was this? What year? This is um, this is right at the beginning of 2010. Okay, all right. So, so that was your real that was your years. that was your real first exposure. To Subaru and, absolutely yeah. and it's funny because I, you know I, I, I did a total 180 at the beginning you think about people that drive Foresters and Outbacks mm -hmm. and right, you know, exactly. your grandparents yeah. and stuff like yeah. that but then you you learn a little bit about how they went the total other way and they make youthful cars like the BRZ the WRX and yeah. the, S, yeah. the STI um, and uh, you know w when I tried the WRX out for myself it was a car I took to college it was a car I took to track days it was a car I drove in the winter yeah. and the car was was reliable to a fault almost. Now I mean, you, it was almost you, boring you already had a 911 at that point or no? You got the, the 911 later um, on. I got the 911 right after that. Okay, right so, after that. so one of the things about this car that always intrigued me is I remember in 2003 and four when the when these cars, this and the Mitsubishi Evo were fighting for support. It, it, was, a to, it was a total battle because in 2002, um, after watching movies like The Fast and the Furious and yeah. playing video games like Gran Turismo, mm -hmm. uh, we started to grow an appreciation for the insane Japanese performance car market yeah. that they have over overseas. And that rivaled... The JDM car culture, as, yes, as you yes, may know. Yeah, yeah. So in 2002, Subaru presented it and just kind of gave them a little something with the WRX. Mm -hmm. And then in 2003, Mitsubishi came right back at it with yeah, the Evo. Yeah. And in 2004, r right when everybody had thought that ja that Mitsubishi had taken the whole Japanese car uh, horsepower yeah, wars, yeah. Subaru surprised everybody in mid-2003 coming out with the WRX STI yeah. for the 2004 model and, year. And, and, and that lit it up. And a big, the, the, see, rivalries always cause great competition. It, it does. And that's, when you go back to the beginning of time, the automotive world, the racing, that's what causes, even today, that's what causes everyone, the manufacturers, to one-up each other. Absolutely. And, and we are the ones that benefit from it on the street. Well, it was done so, about 10 years prior yeah. to that in rally racing. Yeah. And then they brought it right to the streets for Absolutely. the U.S. in the early yeah. 2000s. Yeah. So, so you again, and I know that you had a Porsche, and then I, in the intro, I, I said that you really are really all in on the Japanese sports car market now. Not just because you had a Subaru dealership, which obviously fueled that fire. And Toyota but, before that. And Toyota before that, exactly. Yeah, yeah competition there. So, what is it that, that uh, what other uh, Japanese cars do you like besides the, the uh, WRX or Subaru? Um, like what would you, what else would you want to own? Or I, I, I mean, when I was young and it was still on my automotive bucket list, I love the, the W20 MR2s. I'd love to have a red MR2 turbo because when I was growing up at a, at a Toyota dealership yeah. uh, in a sea of beige Corollas and Camrys, 
the a red MR2 was like that was it. That was my exotic. All right, car well let's make James little. happy. If you, have, <laughs> if you have a red MR2, send it to us. If you're not too far, we could do a show on that. Absolutely. I always like those as well. It, it, it's yeah. interesting the way the world changes and these cars become so important. You know, and we could talk about this for a long time. I want to get to this car a little bit. So tell us what you did to. Th this car is known around here, and it's known, it's spreading uh, to be a very, very special car. What did you do? What did you get? What did you do? And what are we looking at here? Is stock? Any, any mods? Or if you can believe it, I found this car in September on Facebook Marketplace. Um, somebody had the car, and I saw it, and I'm like a 32,000 mile car. Mileage is important, because that's not something you can buy for a car. It's not something you, yes. can, you can repair about a car. It's mileage honest is history. mileage. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. So this car was a complete car. Um, I went over to take a look at the car, it was in Southern Jersey, and um, the car wasn't 100% of what I thought, but then I found that it had a lot of um, dealer add-on parts that you can't get anymore. Oh. And those parts are extremely important because, again, you can't get them, and if even when you can find them, they're usually not in good condition because these are cars that would be used year-round. And that stuff is still on? It's still oh, on so the So you'll car. show me and what it's we... in great condition. Good, good, the good. underneath of the car, it looks, it looks almost mm -hmm. new. So then when we got the car, we had, we had done a little bit of work, a little bit of paint work, a couple of uh, a returning of modifications to stock, just so the car could be as original as possible. Okay. Uh, we did leave a, a Cobb Stage 2 kit on the car just to make it a little bit more enhanced and a little bit more drivable and fun. It's a little bit right. more emotional. You can hear the blow off valve through the intake. You can hear the rumble of the unequal length yeah. headers. It's just... It makes the car, yeah. it gives it a little more character. Yeah, the factory that's, did that's it right, it but you can always add a little bit more pepper and salt. And now yeah. that this car is yeah. about 17 years old, that stuff is really OEM plus. They have it down pat, the car runs sure. great. It's good yep. quality parts, yep. so yep. that, that sure. really helps it out. So, uh, and paint wise, you said you had to do a little paint work here and there, but other than that, is it, uh, yep, this is I'm, the factory color, you didn't, you know. Absolutely, it's World yeah. Rally Blue, um, exactly. World the Rally Blue, World, World Rally, Rally Blue. Blue. Um, and the, the, the color is still offered on new STIs. I have a 2020 STI also, and it's World Rally Blue. I'm sure the next one that comes will be World Rally Blue also. It's just a heritage color. It takes you back to the Colin McRae yeah. days of the 90s. Yeah, which do you prefer, this one or the newer one? Th they're a lot different, and I actually almost laughed about it when I test drove the car with the previous owner, because it's like, they're different. This car's a little bit, uh, a little bit more youthful and a little bit lighter. But the new one's a little bit more solid and has a couple more creature comforts. The new cars are very confidence inspiring, yeah. which is probably why the charm is so great on these cars, because you can bring them more near their limits. There's a little more challenge in driving them, and that's what the fun is. And this car is very reliable, uh, so it's, it's yeah, kind yeah, of a yeah. great sweet spot. Exactly. You know? it's, yes. it's an original yep. car, a youthful car. But you could, you, could, you could drive 200 miles on it and not worry about breaking down. Or exactly. Right, this, right. I mean, it's, it's, got, it's got a great, reliable drivetrain yeah. that you can take to the cross country if you want. Yeah, there's a really big, good. big market for these cars, and we're, we're, we're so happy it's here. So let's do this. Let's take yeah. a look. Let's take a look at the motor. I'm used to going to the back with the Ferraris and the Porsches, but now I go this way now. we have to walk this way. So <laughs> let's go check it out. Absolutely. So before we open it up, the hood scoop, the uh, for the intercooler, right? The the uh, air for the intercooler intake. Yep. Um, what a trademark. Uh, feature for this car. It, it's so big. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, well, a flat engine, the boxer engine, really enabled them to put a lot of things on top of the engine just to, you know, because they had the space. It's a flat engine that's mounted pretty low. So on top of it, they have a, an intercooler for the turbo, and that's where the hood scoop comes from. The yeah. hood scoop feeds right into the top mounted intercooler. Yeah. And you know what? Every time you see one of these in the road, that's one of the first things you see, and it's so recognizable. Absolutely. And this hood scoop is yeah. actually exclusive to the STI. Yeah. It was bigger in the STI than it was for the WRX. Yeah, yeah, I, I know. Yeah, very cool, very cool. Let's yeah. take a look inside, Absolutely. see what's under that beast. Beast of an intake. So this is a nice tidy package here. You know, I see the intercooler, I see the turbo there, and I see, so they even have nice treatment with the red and the pink. I think you may have done that, but tell us some, what's going on here. Absolutely. Well, um, there's a lot of things to take a look at. One of my favorite parts of the engine bay is the shroud right there for the intercooler that's on the hood. Yep. Has a wire that runs right to it, and that's a water spray for the intercooler. Wow. Um, that was on the earlier STIs. The newer ones no longer have that, and it's just something that the rally car had, so they decided to implement it with the street car also. Um, now that, that works, that's, that's a functional? It's fully functional, there's a water tank in the trunk for that. Um, also, uh, another thing that catches your eye absolutely is the intake manifold that's p painted a wrinkle red. Um, that was something where the car left the factory that way. What, uh, did, you, what did you call that red? Wrinkle red. Wrinkle red. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of, uh, the, the, the finish is like a wrinkle red. Yeah. So um, that's something where we actually took that off and powder coated it again just to make it look as fresh as possible. You can see a couple of the lines right down there. 
were, uh, were, were cleaned up a little bit, so they still have that new factory yeah. fresh bronze yep. finish. I don't know what it is about red on a car when you see all black and you see <laughs> red. It just, it just looks like performance. Uh, so absolutely. what a nice little touch that Subaru yep, did Yep, absolutely. Yeah. And then you see a couple of the rose red accents, such as the, the, um, the, the two caps that you can see over here, as well as the, uh, the, the strut brace over yeah. there. That's uh, another signature STI. Wait, this is this this is this the logo right over here. This is factory? The pink? The that, that was a dealer red on accessory, um, but it, it's just supposed to be reminiscent of the, the Japanese car culture and, and some of their history. If you take a look at the STI badge, it's the yeah. same color. Oh, okay. Very you cool. You can also see that again right over here. Yep. Yep. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yep. It sets off nicely. Now, what colors? Well, this car was only available in a few colors too, right? Uh, well, what was interesting is it was available in four different colors. You have the Aspen White, the World Rally Blue, as well as um, Black and then um, silver. silver. So, okay. and then there was only one interior color option. They were all blue and black, but then you had uh, different colors for the wheels. The 17 inch BBSs could have either been gold, reminiscent of the rally car from the 90s mm. or just silver. You know, I know we're, we're at the engine over here, but I wanted to just ask you, I know another car, we actually had one here that was also fighting for this, this Japanese uh, performance you know, uh, supremacy was the R32. Of course, yeah. Right, the Volkswagen R32. Yep. Uh, same year, I believe, in 04, It was right? also in 04, yep. So, wow, so you had the Evo, you had the R32, you had the STI. It's quite a competition. It yeah, was it almost was, like a horsepower yep. wars of the muscle it cars really, in the late So 60s, that was a yeah. great time for these yep. cars, man. I, I, I just, that just hit me. And uh, again, the, the inside of this looks as nice as the outside, so you really took a lot of care in what you did here, obviously, right? Absolutely. We're fortunate enough to have a good uh, set of helping hands back at, at our dealership where we sell Subarus new. We have Steve, our shop foreman, did an excellent job with excellent, excellent attention to detail with each bolt and clip and fastener. And then we have one of our details, Carl, who uh, this was his home for a few days. He spent some time, and if you'd ask him, he could spend another week in it. Is so that right? Did. Yep. Tell me about the Cobb, the air intake there. Absolutely. The intake over there is a Cobb unit. Uh, we have, again, we have a Cobb Stage 2 uh, set up on the car, so that comes with the, um, the cold air intake, as well as a high-flow catted downpipe and a catback exhaust. Um, so, you know, that, it, it, I, I like it because it's a little stealthy and it wakes the car up a little bit. It still looks OEM. The tip still looks OEM, yeah. um, but it just, it has a little bit more of a uh, character to no, I, I think it's, I, the, I think the sound of the blow off valve, absolutely. the turbo swoosh, and the rumble of the unequal length. Well, uh, we're, we're, we're going to get a chance to actually hear that in a little bit when we absolutely, take it for a yeah. drive, but it does look, it, it goes there. It fits nicely. It's part, it actually does not deter at all stock, from, right? the, uh, yeah. oh, from the, the okay, absolutely. So let's go take a look at the trunk and see what's going on back there. Absolutely, definitely. So one of the things I noticed back here is the wing. This is, uh, again, only for the STI. Yep, only STIs have this. And a lot of guys would swap these out. You know, if uh... yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, you know, some people who didn't get the STI but wanted the STI wing would like it, but some people who like the STI wanted to be more stealthy, like a German car, who could take it off. Yeah. Uh, but it was supposed to be a tribute to the rally cars. Yeah. So it's kind of like a GT3 and a GT3 Touring. Everybody wanted the performance, but they didn't want that big wing on the street and whatnot. So more of a yeah, stealth mode. More of a stealth, right? Stealth mode, absolutely. Exactly. And then you got the STI. You got that pink again. That's kind of like uh, as you mentioned the signature color. The signature colors. All right. So let's take a look in here. Now this is a trunk yep <laughs> but you have some cool stuff in here so what do you what is this you have the brochure original brochure yep that's the original brochure i was lucky enough to find that in on ebay so we could display it with the car in our showroom very cool yeah this, this is real this is neat to have that's this is a must-have when you have something like this and then you have the owner's manual the books Kate. Right and then, again they do something cool they do the paint there's the nod to that again and they, yeah very very neat absolutely and the original dealer uh yeah, yeah i guess so cool yeah. ah. Just found that out. That's yeah, pretty cool pretty to have. Enough. Now, what is this? You have a little. You have the. That's uh, a water tank for oh. the uh, for the spray on the intercooler. I'm okay. On the intercooler. All right. Cool. Very good. Before we take a ride, let's take a look at the inside. All right, James. My favorite part of the car. Uh, one of the thing I noticed about this, which I love, is the cloth interior. I mean, it's very Japanese in here. It's amazing how they all have that same the way. The German cars have that look. So do the Japanese cars. But I love the cloth interior. I love the way this. I uh, love the way that stick looks. Yeah, actually, fun fact about the cloth interior in this car. Obviously, this is a budget performance car. This is Porsche 911 power for $31,000 MSRP. Um, the cloth here is completely different than the cloth that's in the back seat. It's supposed to look exactly the same, but it's actually a completely different material. 
uh, for, for cost savings? Is that what it is? Exactly. How about cleaning? Maybe there's more baby proofing going on back there? <laughs> exactly. That too? I took my daughter to school this morning in this well, morning, right <laughs> out of the way here. Well, there you go. No, <laughs> def all the business is up here anyway. You know, that's just an extra. Listen, to have, an, to have a back seat in a performance call like this is a bonus. It's anyway, definitely a bonus. It's a bonus. There's a lot of support in these. I was going to say, the bolsters are really nice. So let's, uh, you ready to roll? Absolutely. Let's ready do it, man. Yep, let's do it. Right off the bat, um, I'm, I'm in love. You know what it is, is when you drive these, I mean, forget F40, even the larger, like the larger Porsches today, you can feel the nimbleness just in, the, in one minute in the car. I can and feel it. And it's a sedan. And it's a sedan. This, uh, this intake here, this, this, this intercooler air intake. As I said, it's a larger hood scoop than you would have had in any other car. <laughs> it definitely takes something to get used to. Yeah, absolutely. Some perspective, huh? Yeah, but I love it. I love it. It's like kind of old school, like an old, uh, what did you call those, the blowers? <laughs> the, yeah, right. The exactly. blowers on the hot rods. And it's fully functional. And fully functional. But they, you know what they call the cooler weather? It's uh, it's boost weather. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you kidding me? I know all about that with the air-cooled cars. Oh, yeah. They actually breathe. You can actually feel the difference. Absolutely. You know what? I think I'm air-cooled because I perform better in this weather, too. <laughs> feel a little fresh, right? Oh my God, totally. Three hundred horsepower. Three hundred horsepower. And you can feel every bit of it with this weight. Oh come on! Woo! This is fun. You may have you. This may you know. I never drove one of these. Back in the day when these were around, I had an R32, which I'll tell you the truth, didn't doesn't feel My favorite part of this car is coming out of a turn and applying the throttle because it takes a second and then you kind of feel it. You know, there's like a yes, like that, a like a boost. That little yeah, the, the turbo yeah. kicks in. You can oh you hear that you, you yeah. get that wastegate? Yeah. That sounds great. My son loves that sound. <laughs> I mean that's one of his favorite things, and I was never really a big fan, but I'm starting to appreciate these. People would think I'm these turbos now. No, these cars, I mean, you know, as different as they are, they're very user friendly. I mean, they're, they're very, I don't want to say they're easy to drive, but they're, they're, it doesn't take a lot to get used no, to. But they are. I mean, you can just drive this car like a normal person. You know, I, I, I like cars that have multiple personalities. Like right now, you could be going out to dinner. You could just have your wife have a baby in the car, right? Yeah. And you could just drive it. Uh, you can get groceries in it. You can. I took my daughter to school again this morning. Well, absolutely. It. Yeah. It's it's very easy to use. Fantastic. This is a lot of fun. We got a nice little road over here. Let's. Uh... Yeah, this is a Sunday. This is without a doubt a brain clearer. I wonder if the... Uh, and you can hear wine as you're accelerating, yeah. too. Yeah. Thanks for letting me drive it, man. Oh, really, buddy. really nice. Just happy that they're getting the attention that they deserve. They're a blast. And I got my Porsche when I sold my first one. I got the Boxster right after that. And uh, I just missed it so much. I really did. I couldn't believe it because I love Porsches so much, but I missed I missed my WRX. Really? Yeah. Now, you sold your Boxster on P-Car Market, I right? did. Yeah, that I sold it on P-Car Market. Market. Absolutely. Yeah, that was about a year ago-ish. Yeah, yeah, yeah so, that was so, about a year and a half, yeah. And that, and then you got this to kind of replace it almost? Um, I got the 2020 to replace that one because I plan on, uh, on doing track days with it. This, I don't want to do any track days uh, with it. 
it makes you want to, but you really can't. You know, it's too nice. Yeah. And again, the 2020, the it's the same engine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this engine that they've they've continuously used, 2021 is going to be the last year for this engine. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh, so that's a big deal. Yeah. That's a big deal. The responsiveness is so great too. So it's it's just it's like a little toy car. It really feels like a little go kart. Oh uh, yeah. And that's not a bad way. I mean, people say no. toy car. It's like. A toy car is a great thing. It's like a little go-kart. Absolutely. If this, so this was made from 04 to what? Or um, this body style uh, went from 2000 and, in the U.S. 2002 to 2007. It underwent two facelifts. Uh, the uh, 02 and 03 being referred to as the bug eye because they're round headlights. Uh, that the was 04 so and 05 were referred to as a blob eye. And then the 06 and 07 were referred to as the hawk eye because they had the more aggressive headlights. Um, the 04 was the first year of the STI. Stupid question. What does STI stand for? Subaru Technica International. It's actually spelled oh. out on the door. That's what that is. Yeah. Okay. And WRX is World Rally Experimental. I'll tell you, there's a couple of people in my office that are so happy I'm doing this, and not just for the <laughs> fact that they're going to get to see it in action, but they wanted me to like it. <laughs> and uh, they were right. I am going to go in there, and I'm going to admit it. I get it. I get fun. it. Lots of fun, man. Lots of fun. I don't care how much money you have or what kind of cars you have. I would urge everyone who likes driving to get behind the wheel of one of these. Well, I'll tell you, it's almost like I found the new taste bud for my palate. This car, it checks every box as far as fun, lightweight, visceral. Uh, it makes you want to drive faster. Um, it's, it's nimble. Just what a fantastic car. I'm definitely hooked. Thank you, James, uh, for the experience. And uh, uh, what a great car. Anyone that's looking for a WRX STI, if you're one of those people that never drove one, if you're a Porsche guy or even an uh, Italian car guy, this is something that will definitely fulfill a need for speed. And uh, what a cool car. James, that was a blast. Thank you so much. We got to take this on dirt next time. The rally car, I got to get this on dirt. Not this maybe one. Maybe not this right? one, yeah. But maybe not this one. <laughs> but thank you Absolutely. so much, man. It was really a pleasure. And, uh, My pleasure. It's always fun to come here to Peak Car Market to see what you guys got going on. Yeah, no, I, of, co of course. Thank you. And uh, thank you so much for watching. This is my car. We'll see you on the next episode. Okay, that'll be the clap. Double clap. Double clap.